Well, today I'm playing in the shop. I've been uh, working on stuff for the little Atlas mills. Well, the Atlas mill is shaped on the lathe. And today I'm just kind of continuing that. I'm going to start doing a fair amount of tooling, I think, for the little Atlas milling machine. I'm going to start utilizing all of my Atlas equipment quite a bit more than I am right now um, as we set the shop up and, you know, just the, just the projects I tend to, I'm choosing to work on right now. So, several years ago, I built a little hold down clamp like this. And this is the, this is the body of them. And you mount your stud in between, and whether it's a stud, whether it's a bolt going down through, and if you've got something that you want to clamp from a from an angle, you can clamp it like here, and you know have it. Anyway, but anyway, I built these several years ago. It's kind of a cute little system. I don't remember where the plans were published. I saw them in something, and and um, you know I built three or four of them. Now I've utilized these a little bit on the milling machine. I haven't used them a whole lot just because they don't. They're not really sized the way I want them. I need to build more T-nuts for it if I'm going to utilize these on the mill, and I'm probably not going to realistically. These are these are threaded three eighths, um, and the the existing T-nuts that go on that mill except a half inch bolt. So, like I say, I've done a couple little things, and I have used them a few times, but I'm not real pleased with them. Now, I think on the Atlas milling machine, I can get quite a bit of use out of them, and I'm reworking the work holding on all of the Atlas machines anyway. So the T-nuts that I built for the Atlas Shaper and the Atlas Mill are 3 8 threads like this. And what I've discovered with using them is it's it's actually too large. A 5 16 hold down would be more appropriate for it just because the T-slots are not wide enough and throughout all the Atlas machines they're fairly universal. So if you've built for one of them, built T-nuts for one of them, or T-studs, whatever you're going to do. Well, you can do it for all of them. So I think 5 16 is going to be more appropriate for stud size on the Atlas machines. Um, now, I also think that this size is too large for all the Atlas machines. You know, it's more appropriate for the mill, but it's really not. So what I've done is I went back and we've made some smaller ones. So if we compare sizes, this is what we've got. So what I did is I set up the CNC on the mill, and we've been running these. I ran a few yesterday, and I've got one set up over there that I'm going to pull out and load the next one, so I'll show you that in a minute. But what I did when I started out doing these was I, of course, drew them up in CAD and CAM using Fusion and scaled them there, and then I 3D printed out a pair of them, which would be a set. A uh, couple of reasons for it. One is I could physically look at the size and feel them and see if it was what I wanted. The other was I could nest them to where I could hopefully best utilize stock. So what I found out is I can put them on just a piece of aluminum. And this is, for this size, it's 3 16 is what I ended up using. It was as close as I could come. And it's 2 inch wide stock and it's about 3 and a quarter inches long, which gives me a little extra material. So anyway, I set up the mill set up a little quickie fixture which just amounts to a little thicker piece of aluminum that I went ahead and drilled and when I had the drill set up well, I went ahead and drilled my blanks and I've got I think three or four of these blanks left to do I've got three sitting here so I've got I've got yeah three more to run off that I'm gonna do this morning um, so I just set them up I drilled them and it's universal I can flip them either way they're centered up in the stock and um, start the machine running now I'm kinda babysitting it because my CNC, I don't, you know, 100% trust it, so I'm keeping chips cleared and I'm babysitting them. But what I'm what I'm ending up with is two parts that are machined out out of one one piece, just like that. I've gone through, we've outer contoured them, and we've chamfered the edges, and then we've engraved one of them with our little Hills Custom logo. And what I do when I finish doing this is I'm just gonna, I think, lightly hit them on the buffer just along the edges just to smooth them up a little bit more than what they are and uh, then we're probably going to anodize them since we're spending this much time playing with them so we'll at least get a few of those done and this is our little fixture, this is just scrap now my uh, little mill lost uh, lost steps yesterday when I was running it on one of these and uh, rather than trying to re-zero it because I don't trust the 
trust being able to reliably pick up again and have everything be exactly the same. That's the downside of having this old, old wore out homebrew CNC. The next one, if we get that far, will be much better, I hope. But anyway, this is the way they come off. They come out of the fixture just like that. Got the edges beveled. We've got one of them engraved. And uh, all in all, I'm really, really happy with those. I'm anxious to get them done and up and running. So, back sides have got, we've got just a little bit of an edge here that I'm just going to lightly break that. Up. There's the back sides of them. There's the front sides of them. And I think we're going to have a nifty little uh, set of clamps here once they're all done. And, um, you know, it doesn't matter if everything's perfect. You know, I got some grumblings lately that my machine was dirty. I had one guy just made his life history a troll in me. And uh, I finally had to do away with him. But the bottom line to all of it is uh, I'm out here in the shop making parts, making tooling, and having a grand time. So, anyway, let's just switch this over to a time lapse and I'll let her run and you can see what's going on. Well, I got the little Mickey Mouse anodizing set up going here, and I've been anodizing these uh, these parts for the last, oh, hour and a half here. So we're just about to pull them out, rinse them off, and uh, we're going to put them into the dye bath. And let's just see what we come up with. And what I'm doing is just out of the anodizing acid, rinse them off there, then rinse them off in a uh, baking soda solution to neutralize any acid that's left, and um, then rinse them off in water again and uh, into the dye bath. Pretty red going on there. Looks like that's all going to take really well. We'll just let that set and cook for about another 10 minutes. I'm going to go ahead, clean up my acid tank here, get the lid back on it, 
and um, sealer's heating up. Well, our sealer's just almost to a boil here, and from what I can see so far, our red looks really nice. I'm really happy with that so far, I think. So let's give it just a couple more minutes until we actually start to boil there. And we're just going to pull these out, rinse them off, and uh, then they'll go into the sealer for about 15 minutes. There we go. Let that cook in there for about another 10 minutes. And, uh, and we'll take them out, rinse them off one more time, and dry them off. Let me dump this old, ugly red water. Put some fresh stuff in. Oh yeah. Yeah, for shop furniture, that's pretty uh pretty fancy. All right, well, let's uh, give these one final wipe down and take a look at them. Because for shop furniture, these look, I think, pretty really, really nice. Now I might on the next batch actually clean up these, put a higher polish on them before I do the uh, do the machining on them. But all in all, those look really, really nice. Go together as a set, just like that.
the next thing we'll do is we'll uh, turn our center pieces in between and I'm still contemplating if I'm going to go with a 5 16th center for them which is probably what I'll do although I may go all the way down to a quarter on this uh, on these little atlas machines for using hold downs like this and everything a quarter inch grade 8 bolt would probably do just fine you know and we'll do some studs I think the, the limiting factor is my radius here I think this is only set up for it a half an inch as I remember and uh, I'm not sure that half inch is going to give us quite as much strength through there as I'd like. I think they'll last forever. I think even very little wall thickness through here is going to be just fine for this. But um, I'll contemplate that and see. I want to fit up some, uh, fit up our pivot pins on top. So that's the next project. We'll uh, get those done and finish this up. So this is where we're going to leave this with our four little sets of clamps. Those two, just like that. And they'll mate together as a pair. So one side's got our engraving on it. Just like that. And the other side is blank. Just like that. And when you get everything lined up, they do line up. And uh, I think those are going to be real fine addition to the shop. So I think the next thing we're, we're working on is hold down accessories. And this is going to be the beginning of that. So hopefully you found a little bit interesting here. If you didn't haven't already, I'd appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button down there. And if you hit the bell notification, you'll know when I put out a new video. Any comments or suggestions for me, leave them in that comment section below. And as always, guys, thanks for taking the time to watch.